Once again, a big thank you goes out to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So the light wasn't kicking off and uh, Tom and uh, Alistair and Thor and I kind of gave up. So we've driven a couple of valleys down and all of a sudden the, the sky's opened up a little bit and you can see we're getting some beautiful dappled light on the peaks in the background here. And it's going all the way around to this peak over here so I'm just zooming in on little areas, vignettes, where there's bits of light touching the peaks or kissing the peaks. And I absolutely love these little snow banks in the foreground. And then we have some peaks in the background that are, that are all lit up. It's really quite something. It's great when you can get those shadowed areas contrasting with the sunlit areas. It has a, a really great contrast to it. The light on the on the main peak in the background right now is just absolutely beautiful. So again, I'm using the XT4 because I have a long or a longer lens for that. With the uh, the GFX50, I just don't have a longer enough lens to to capture that light in the background. amazes me how light will transform the ordinary into the extraordinary and how important light is in not only landscape photography but photography in general. Now I'm not suggesting that this photograph is extraordinary. Uh, in fact it's not that interesting other than the light is really great on, uh, on the peaks in the background there. Basically what I did was I just photographed for the light. I saw the light and I just photographed the mountain with that light. And as far as the composition goes, it's not really that interesting. I plonked the mountain in the middle of the frame and then had the light do all the work for me. My point is that light has the ability, no matter what the subject is, to transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. Out of the landscape photographs that I've shown you from that evening, this composition is probably my favorite. So I've said this in a number of videos, but I'll, I'll repeat it here. When it comes to landscape photography and composition, I usually base my compositions on whatever is happening with the light. So in this case, I was really attracted to the mountain in the background with the light striking it in the background and it's surrounded by the mountains and the sky that doesn't have any light so it just adds that really great contrast that I'm looking for. Something else that I really liked about this scene were the two snow banks at the bottom of the frame and to my eye having one on the right side one on the left side and then the sunlit mountain they seem to balance one another out quite nicely it almost forms like a triangular shape. When I look at this photograph I first look at the sunlit mountain, 
then the snow banks, and then the sunlit mountain again. My eye seems to bounce back and forth between the three of them. Now, when it came to processing, what I did for this image is I really darkened the sky and brought up the highlights in that sunlit mountain because I wanted that to be the brightest area in the image so that your eye would go to that mountain. And I particularly like the cloud just kind of hanging over that mountain that just adds another element of interest. As far as the mid-ground goes and, and the bottom of the frame, I lightened that and gave it a little bit more contrast so that you could see what was happening in the details there. So overall, I really like this photograph. Now then, if I had cropped this a little bit differently, say eliminated the snowbank on the bottom left, the photograph still works and it's still balanced but you'll notice now that we're ping-ponging between the sunlit mountain and that snowbank, but the photograph comes across as rather empty on the right side of the frame, and the sunlit mountain is just too close to the left side of the frame. So we need a bit of breathing room on both sides. One side doesn't have enough, and the other side, the right side, has just a little bit too much. A big thanks goes out to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video and supporting my channel. If you're in the market for an easy to set up, elegant website, then why not head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. Whether you're a business or just want to share your art with the world, Squarespace has all of the tools that you'll need to create an all-inclusive website. Like what you find? Then use the code Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. That's right, 10% off your first purchase with the code Adam Gibbs. as I enjoy taking photographs in great light, not every situation is going to present great light. So in those cases, I'll generally go for more abstract images, perhaps a pattern shot or something where there's a juxtaposition of different elements like a contrast in colors or a contrast in uh, shapes or even textures. These next few images are a good example of that. This image in particular, I was attracted to the pointy patterns at the bottom of the photograph and the textures in the hillside. So all I did in post was just add a little bit of contrast and clarity and saturation, and also brightened up the central portion of the photograph. this image here, the light is very flat. So what I ended up doing was just dodging and burning uh, bright areas and darker areas to just give it a little bit more depth and texture uh, so it doesn't look so flat. And finally, this photograph here had lots of contrast in it because it was taken on a bright sunny day mid-morning. So in this case, I warmed the photograph up considerably and brightened up the shadows just a little bit.
If you made it this far into the video, thank you ever so much for watching. And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It really helps. All right. Thanks again. Bye for now. So Thor has recommended uh, uh, an Icelandic uh, delicacy and this is uh, fermented shark and uh, <laughs> it smells like it smells like diapers <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's got a bit of an after, an aftertaste. It's a bit like bat sushi that's gone off. <laughs> I'm impressed you're going for a second bit. <laughs> I, I can see how you can acquire taste. It's good. Yeah. I think Gavin would like some of this. He likes some of this. So these guys are a lot braver than I am. Oh. Initially, it's all right, and then you get that hit of ammonia. Yeah, here, try some. Oh, no. Come on, man. No. Come on, just try it. No, I'm come not. Come on. Oh. Just try a little bit. I'm oh, trying to find the bit on. that's the least. No, no, I can't. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you bite into it, it starts fizzing. No. It's just kind of a pleasant, horrible taste.